so the book I read for my wider reading is um, Small Things Considered by Henry Petrosky. Uh, I chose this book. I didn't actually like look out to pick this book for anything, but I just decided to. And I read through it, and I think after going through it, it's like a really good book for not just engineering, because I want to be an engineer, but not just engineering, but like for various things, like considering things that it shows and considering how it like relates some things, like some, how I say, important skills of engineering to basic life. So I'll give the first example. It talks about uh, how there's no perfect design, how everything you see in life from the chair to a cup, a simple cup, from the door handle to even like the, okay, yeah, I drew this last time. You guys know the um, tripod things like that hold your pizza from like the, yeah, exactly. So it shows how even a simple design, like really basic design like that is really, really um, efficient in terms of engineering. So uh, I first looked at this, like something like this. It starts off with like talking about two people or three people, an engineer, an architect, and uh, uh, a designer, I think, something, yeah, 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 someone of that nature, someone who is in, involved in design. And then the three people were like on a radio talk show, and they're talking about like how things have no perfect design, and then it starts off with, and then they have like phone calls on the radio. And then someone calls in and like, because they accept people to call and things like that, and someone calls, and then he says, oh, he notices something, the design of the pizza tripod. And this thing looks really basic, and you know it's definitely really cheap, because it's like made of plastic. And like it's made of like, yeah, it's, re it's a really basic design. But like, the purpose of this being made was just to avoid cardboard sticking on your pizza. But have you ever thought of like, the fact how this thing is so shaped, like it's so perfectly shaped you can like lay an egg on it? And like you could use it like for your egg crates or something like that. Um, also, someone else actually called in to say that she uses this little plastic, plastic thing as like a tray between her palettes for paint. So like she uses it like um, as a yeah, you get what I mean, like something in between to hold it. And then you could see how efficient this thing was, despite despite what it originally was made for, and. That just like reading that just made me realize how many things or how many things people make, how many things engineers do, and how things like how efficient it is de develops, how much, uh, how important it is. And then one thing about being an engineer is that in design, you you don't just design based on, you don't design anyhow. Like you don't think I want to design a building, so you just de um, design out of your mind. Being an engineer, you're given limits, you're given, you have to design with, uh, in fact, one architect once said was, um, the beauty of design is in being able to produce a beautiful design with constraints. Like, um, how many of you know the Opera Sydney House in Australia? Okay, now, a building like that was, the actual uh, cost that it was meant to be originally paid for to build, build the whole thing, despite the fact that we all know it's a good looking thing, building, but it was actually like times 10 of what was actually planned. And something like that, engineering wise, it's not really, you wouldn't, it's not as you wanted to, as it was not as it was planned to be, and as such, it wasn't really efficient. But then as something like um, being able to design with constraints, as was said, is the beauty of design, is what makes engineering so beautiful in, in that in that sense, and so like and to give an example of when we talk about the efficiency of a design and why there's no perfect design, uh, the first cups that like were made at first were like glass cups that were like straight. We all know like glass cups how they look. Uh, you see a round cylindrical, perfectly perfectly cylindrical glass cup, and then another glass cup is made that is like shorter has a uh, smaller circumference on the base and has a wider top. And then you're wondering what's the difference. Like, okay, maybe they look different, but like 
have you ever thought of the fact how the wider cup is better in that you can actually stack it? Can you stack like a perfectly cylindrical glass tumbler? You can't stack it. And in that way, just a little tweak in the design of a glass cup made it more uh, space efficient, made it more more balanced. You, you might think, how, how is it more balanced? Uh, if something is straight, I don't know if how many of us here do physics, but if something is straight and if something is wider at the top and smaller at the bottom, not obviously too small, uh, if you tilt this, this is less likely to fall than if you tilt this. How many of us agree? Not, not too small yet, exactly. So you can see how a little tweak in the design like as that made such a massive change in how this could be used and how this, like this, how you use, yeah, how that could be used. And now you might say, okay, this is like a perfect design for a cup, but just changing this from glass to plastic, which is actually cheaper, you find out that plastic, like polystyrene cups rather, polystyrene cups like have, they carry less germs than plastic cups and, that's, and than glass cups and that's why you see that polystyrene cups are given maybe to like little children or like is used more often now like it's, I don't think there were, there were polystyrene cups like back in the day. But yes, yeah, so that's an improvement on the um, design of cups and in that being in that being an improvement that's why you see, like the iPhone 10 just came out let's say last year you won't see Apple say this is like the best phone we ha we will ever make because if they if they do say that like how can they say this is the best they will ever make because there's always there's like always room for improvement there's always room to like improve so if they say the iPhone 10 the best phone Apple Apple was ever made, or Apple will ever make rather, and then they make like they bring out the iPhone 11 and they say, "Oh, sorry, like this is actually the best phone we will ever make." That's like being contradictory. It sounds, it sounds weird, and that's why you see best phone yet. I think, and you, and you think, yeah, that's just a little thing, but that's the little thing which makes designers know that there's always a room for me for uh, improvement. So. I think this book is really good, even if you're not studying engineering, because it gives a far wider scope than uh, what the examples I just gave in a cup and um, the pizza tripod thing and stuff like that. So you, you, you learn a lot from this book. Uh, it talks about how the toothbrush has developed, the little toothbrush has developed. It talks about computers, obviously how we know how, I don't really need to tell us how Computers have developed from like being a room. Computers used to take up the whole room to like being in our pockets and stuff like that. So I think this book is really helpful, irrespective of whether you're studying engineering or not. And uh, I think I would recommend this Small Things Considered by Henry, Henry Petrosky for anyone to read. Thank you.